are for the night time, days are wide awake, visions are for crazy men, I mean for goodness sake, but I'm seeing things, I'm seeing things. What am I going to do at a ski resort? I've enough trouble walking on the snow. Quit belly aching, Louie. Nobody forced you to come. I'm the person who won this weekend, right? And you're the person who invited himself along. Yeah, but that was before I found out that some person had reserved separate rooms. Push me, Louie. I can always cancel yours. Who said I didn't want to spend time with you? I want to spend time with you, but I want to spend time with me, too. Oh, so if I hear you correctly, what you want to do is sleep with yourself. Talk about narcissism. Listen to me. We had a pretty good marriage except for one thing. Me, right? No, we had to live together. I want my own space. You could have got one big room, then there'd be enough space for both of us. No, this way we can be together when we feel like it and not together when we don't feel like it. You'll have your space, I'll have mine. Great, I'm married to a parking lot attendant. What'd you say? Look at this place. Look at these boots. They make sure I get you to rent the boots, right? Ah, uh, Douglas. Hi. Uh, named Duggan, I'm the manager here. Can I help you? Hi, Mr. Duggan, I'm Marge Ciccone, and I want a weekend here with a guest of my choice, and this is my choice, and I want two rooms, please. Hey, you're not married? No, we're married. But not to each other? To each other, we're... You still want uh, separate rooms? Yeah, we're separated. You're separated, so you want separate rooms? Yeah, she's very literal-minded. It was much easier in the old days when everyone was just Mr. and Ms. Smith. <laughs> 2.16, 2.18. You got a preference, darling? Yeah, I'll take 218. 218. My lucky number. Right up them stairs. Would you like to book another room in case we decide to be together? Ah, uh, come on. Give me a break. Oh, the uh, welcome dance is at 8 o'clock. Oh, great. Looks a little bit like Yoda, doesn't he, that guy? Yoda? <laughs> yeah, the ears, where the ears are. This is a nice room you got here. My room is so small. No, you don't, Lou. This is my room. Okay? You wonder how small my room is? Mm -hmm. I tried to get an extra blanket and there wasn't enough space in the room for it. I just don't want to hear about it, okay? You want to hear about my bed? It's so lumpy, it's going to throw my back out. How's your bed? Small, Lou. Very small. <sighs> what are you wearing? Pop shirt. Why? Because you got the wrong suitcase at the airport. Oh, Louie. You look ridiculous. What am I going to do? I can't put on a dirty sweatshirt, right? You want separate tables now? You're going to sit with me. Well, couldn't you find anything else to put on? Yeah, but somehow I'd feel silly wearing Pop's bathing suit to a dance. It's got alligators on it, too. Here's two. I don't know. I don't know you two. You're Marge and Lily Ciccone. Marge Ciccone? You, I know. You do? Sure, right. you're one of our winners. All right. I'm Yvonne Kelly. I'm your Silver Lake timesharing rep. Oh, yeah, of course well, you are. What do you think? Don't you just love this uh, place? Oh, 
Uh, well, I, we just got here, you know, so we're gonna go. Not this dump. This. Oh, this. Oh. <laughs> she means this. Your winter and summer playground. Opening in September of next year, and there's only 17 prime units left. Only uh, 17 uh, units left. Huh? Well, actually, uh, we're just here for a, a nice, relaxing weekend. You know, right, we want to get away from it all. We're completely broke. You know, we won this thing, and, and we don't have a penny, so we came here because it's free. Oh, hey, hey, I don't want to pressure you folks. Relax. Have fun. Fall in love with the place. Then I'll pressure you. Oh, just kidding. Just kidding. Oh, you look like you could use a lay, Louie. What? Your dress more for Hawaii than for skiing. Oh, you mean the shirt? She means the shirt. It's a shirt, right? Oh, well, you know, he yeah. got his father's suitcase by mistake. Oh. Yeah, my father was going to Miami, right? He's got money. We don't have any money, right? So we came here because it's free. Uh, yeah. We'll see if we can get you a table by the fire. Oh, oh great. Right. Okay. We'll see you, Mars. Thank you. Louie. Oh. She's trying to sell us stuff. That's uh, Della on the organ, and that thing on her lips is Howie Allen. Now, we just got one of our prime units. Oh, did he? Howie, Howie, Howie take a breather. <laughs> and tell Marge and Louie Ciccone how great this place is. Hi, kids. Yeah, yeah, this place is really great. You know, I came here for a weekend once, and I've been here three weeks already. Thank you. I may stay forever, thanks to Yvonne. <laughs> Howie just loves the skiing. <laughs> Skiing? I didn't know there was skiing here. I came here for the music. Uh, Howie, please, this is a difficult passage. <laughs> you know, there's something about the snow that just makes people want to cuddle. <laughs> Come on, sure. over this one. They're all real estate agents. Nice meeting you. <laughs> Are these free? Well, yes. Uh, good. Oh, Candy and Clement Thorndike meet Marge and Louie Ciccone. Right. How are you? Hello. Hi. 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 Nice to meet you. Thank you. Dynamite shirt. Well, oh, thanks. My wife is nuts about it, too. Clement's one of our big buyers. He's taking a deluxe unit for the whole winter. I'll let him soften you up, and we'll talk condo. Yeah. Uh, have fun. Don't let Yvonne's hard sell put you off. This really is a marvelous spot. You're spending your winter here? Uh -huh. I keep telling him that everybody goes to Palm Beach for the winter, but he just doesn't want to give this place up. <laughs> Right. I guess sentiment has a lot to do with it. I've been coming here 35 years. Rod, Rod. Over here. Hi, uh, where have you been? You promised to dance with me. This is Silver Lake's ski instructor. Rod Merton, Marge and Louis Ciccone. Hi, you folks skiers? Oh, uh, no, uh, not really. No, no way. Just uh, sitting and walking, that's about it. Well, that's great, because there's a sign-up sheet for lessons just outside the main door. Oh, great. Come on, Rod. We're wasting your music. Well, I hope I see you on the slopes. Right, we'll be there. Hi. Oh, ski. You know, we should have brought Jason. He would have loved this. we got a kid named Jason. He likes things like this. Your daughter seems to be having a good time, huh? Eh? That isn't my daughter. That's my wife. Oh. But yes, she does seem to be having a good time. Uh, can I get you a drink? No, that's okay. Oh, thank that's you. okay. No, thank you. It's his wife. Louie, why did you say that? Does that look like his wife? Sometimes you act like that shirt looks. Now for a fun change of pace. The hokey pokey with a twist. When the music stops, the person in the spotlight has to sing. Now, what you sing is up to you. Just remember, kids, keep it clean. Come on, Louie, let's go. Well, I'm not kidding. I'm not going to dance. Louie, it's not an audition for a chorus line. It's a hokey pokey. Put your right foot out, you put your right foot in. Oh, Where's the ball in the jacket? This one that hits you, then you got to sing or something. What are Look, you kidding? there's 50 people here now. What are the odds okay. of the spotlight ever hitting right, us? Just get over here. Wait, wait for the spotlight. Put your right foot in. You put your right foot in. Put your left foot in and you shake it all about. Do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You put your left foot in, you put your left foot out. You put your left foot in and you shake it all about. Do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around.
Absolutely. Okay, what are we going to sing? What are you going to do? You sing. You'll sing My Heart's an Open Book and I'll do the do 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 do. I'll do the do 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 as you sing. Go ahead. Oh. My wife will sing a song very shortly. Uh, it's your idea. Look, look. My heart is an open book. I love nobody but you. Do 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 told us to part. <laughs> That's when I told him that I had a cheating heart. Okay, 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 okay. That's it. Thank you. That's all for you. Chicone. Hi, Lou. I'm Steve. Oh, right. Have you got a last name, Steve? Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, Steve, I was wondering, uh, what's a mechanic doing investigating this? I don't get it. I'm not a mechanic. What's... Oh, you were going by the suit, weren't you? Yeah. Well, with that kind of deduction, that just might lead me to think that you're Don Ho. What? The Hawaiian singer. You were at the shirt. Listen, I can explain that. My father was going to Miami, right? And I was coming here with her wife, but she wanted to think. Well, I'm a cop. I just moonlight as a mechanic. I mean, how else am I going to make a few extra bucks? Well, even a mechanic could write this one up. Got a room full of people jumping up and down. The whole place starts shaking and those screws just work themselves right out of that post. It's probably been there for years. This place was old even when I was a kid. Yeah, but what if this wasn't an accident, though? This is the most accidental accident I've ever seen. Now, do you mind if I ask you a question? No, go ahead. Well, you're very curious about what's been going on here. Guys, that curious, I've got to ask myself, why? Oh, well, I'm a reporter. Luciconi, Toronto Gazette. Uh-huh. Hot shot reporter from the big city trying to turn an accident into a murder, eh? No, I'm just uh, asking questions, that's all. Ask him in the big city. Oh, and Luciconi. Yeah? If I read one word about me moonlighting, there will be a murder. Yours. Can I? Turn it the right way, not like you are. What do you mean you're not like me? Look, March, turn the knob and get out of the way. I'll take care of this. All right. Jesus, bed is soft compared to my bed. What do you want, Lou? I had a vision. Now you're going to tell me you had a vision. Yeah. And you think Holly was murdered, right? A real bummer, huh? Can't you go anywhere without ending up in the middle of a murder? Hey, 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 hey. The world is a violent place now. I don't seek these things, they just happen, right? This is my holiday, and you're not gonna ruin it because because visions of murder are dancing around in your head. Well, what do you want, sugar plums? Oh, just just go to your room. What? Louie, please. I'm going skiing tomorrow, right? And I have got to get my sleep. Now go on, go to your room. Go! I didn't choose to have this vision, March. I had it and I came in here looking for a little empathy for my wife. That's you want empathy from your wife? Yes, I'd like that very much. Mary Jane Dixon. Stuck. Try the knob.
Marge? What was your vision, Louie? I don't think you really want to know. Louie. It was like an enormous bank of snow, a big snow bank like. And then? It snowed. Then what? That's it. You didn't have a vision, you had a weather report. It was like the uh, snowstorm in the Citizen Kane. Did anybody say Rosebud? That's very funny, Marge. Marge? Marge? Marge! So, Howie was murdered. Now, how are you going to find out who did it? That's a good question. Gee, this bed is lumpy, huh? So is the ceiling. First, got to figure out who Howie is or was. You can start by searching his room. Come on. Oh, haven't you got a bobby pin? Let's go downstairs and try to get a key. What are you doing? Just a minute. Come on, you can't even open your own door. You can open this. How the heck did you do that? My mom and dad used to lock me out if I came home after 3 a.m. Come on in. What if somebody comes? A whistle. You know how to whistle? I never heard you whistle. Yeah, you just put your lips together and you blow. Okay, that's a weird sense of deja vu. remember this. A kiss is just a kiss. A sigh is just a sigh. No. Oh, I, you know, I gotta have my exercise. You know, you need 500 muscles in shape for skiing. Well, just jog quietly, eh? I got people sleeping here. Well, I will. Okay. She doesn't need a separate room. She needs a rubber room. out there prowling the halls. Why didn't you whistle to warn me like you were supposed to? I tried to whistle, but I couldn't because my mouth was too dry. So I sang As Time Goes By. That's not even the same movie. Well, it had Humphrey Bogart in it. What difference does it make? You know who's prowling around here? Who? Rod Merton. Came right through that window. I had to hide in the closet. Rod Merton was in here, too? Yeah. What are you doing? He took something out of here. The only thing that's missing is foot powder. Well, Rod's a ski instructor. Maybe he's got athlete's foot. Come on, let's get out of here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you doing? I'm going to borrow this. A dead man's sweater? Well, what am I going to wear? I'm going to freeze to death and pop stuff. You are sick. At least I didn't take his foot powder. He's got a little hat in here, too. Look, all you do is talk to the guy, you turn on the charm, let him teach you how to ski, and then maybe he's going to open up to you. Oh, great. I'll just bat my eyelashes at him and I'll say, Hey, Rod, how come you squashed Howie Allen with a chandelier? Is that what you had in mind, Lou? Yeah, basically, yes. I'm going to work on it. Don't worry about it. Huh? 
Alright, I got you down here on the list. You're going number one. Hi. Hi, Candy. You cold? I mean, as a person? Of course not, Candy. Everybody knows you're one of the warmest people anybody could meet. I believe Mrs. Ciccone was asking your opinion of the weather. Yeah, well, I'm freezing my spandex off, but all Clemmy here wants to do is go skiing and ice fishing. <laughs> Nothing like ice and snow, eh, Louis? That's what I keep telling my huskies. Here he is. Hi, Rod. Hi, Mrs. Thorndike. You ready for your lesson? Can't wait. For somebody who hates the winter, you certainly seem to have taken to skiing. Oh, I hate the winter, but I love the snow. Gee, you know, I wanted to take a lesson, too. Oh, I'm sorry, but it's first come, first serve. Yes, and I asked first. But they were here first. Oh, sorry, it's a definite policy. No, excuse me, uh, see? Marge Chacon. Not too legible, but that's her name. She's number one. Oh, so it is. Okay, okay. Age before beauty. Don't pout, Candy. You can come ice fishing with me. Oh, it's so boring. Oh, really? I thought you enjoyed putting the worms on the hooks. I'll put your name down second. If Marge survives, you can go with it. Well, you all set, Mr. Coney? I'm raring to go. He's ready. All right, let's go. Good one, Marge. Nice technique on taking out the tree. Next time, try to stay on your feet. Listen, staying on my feet is not the problem at the moment. Getting up is the ah. problem. <laughs> a little trough problem staying up, do you? Yeah. You know something? This is much harder than it looks. I guess I should have doubled up on my vitamins this morning. You know, I get something that's a lot more fun than vitamins. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You want some Coke? Coke? Nah. I think it's too cold for a Coke. I could go for a nice hot chocolate. Well, I tell you... Put some marshmallows on this, it'll warm you right up. That's cocaine. Hey, 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 not so loud. Oh, yeah. Sure, I bet you don't want me to be loud. Take it easy. Take it easy? You're out here in all this fresh air, and all you can think of is taking that dope? Are you weird or something? Hey, all right, you don't want any. No, I don't want any. Oh, you think you're really cool, don't you, huh? Really cool? You know what you are? Do you know what you are? Eve! Oh, wait a minute! Stay out of my Words. Snowplow! Then he offers me cocaine. Cocaine? Gee, is there an echo here from the mountains? That's it. Cocaine, that's what I saw. I didn't see snow. I saw cocaine in my vision. This is great. And the foot powder wasn't foot powder. It was cocaine. It was cocaine. Howie's probably a knock. How much do you buy? What? How much cocaine did you buy? You don't think I buy that stuff, do you? Well, I certainly hope you did, Marge, because if you didn't, we don't have any evidence. Go right back. Come here. Here, go and buy $5 and uh, 27 cents. Here. Oh, no, actually, Louis, uh, Rod and I aren't speaking to each other. Why not? I told him that he was evil, and I, I threatened him with my ski pole. Come on, huh, Marge? You blew the whole thing now. Well, anybody can make a mistake, can't they, Mr. Perfect? I just wish you would think of one person who could have handled this better than me. Just think of one person. I'm deeply disturbed about this, this liaison, which seems to be developing between you and this character from the Gazette. I can assure you, Mr. Spencer, there is no liaison taking place between Mr. Ciccone and I. Our relationship is strictly professional. I didn't mean to suggest it was anything else, Miss Redfern. It just seems that on several of your recent cases, Ciccone appears to have had inside information. Mr. Ciccone is a very enterprising reporter, but I can promise you he receives no preferential treatment from me. Well, I certainly hope not. My friends at the press club have started to make pointed remarks about favoritism. You don't have to worry, sir. The editor and publisher's dinner is coming up. Mrs. Spencer would be devastated if she didn't receive an invitation. They put out such a magnificent spread. She looks forward to it. I understand, sir. Excuse me, Miss Redfern. I know you asked me to hold your calls, but there's a party calling long distance who insists on talking to you. Who is it? Mr. Ciccone. And he's calling Collect. Uh, well... Go ahead, Miss Redfern, by all means. Yes? Yes, I'll uh, accept the charges. Mr. Ciccone, I'm in the middle of a meeting. Can I call you back later? Redfern, if I wanted to argue, I'd call my wife. Please, would you hear me out? I I I'm at a pay phone. It's only going to take a second. Talk I'm really listen. very busy, Mr. Oh, Ciccone. Up. Look, I need your help to bust a major drug ring. You interested in that? It's at Silver Lake Lodge. 
Well, this sounds like a police matter. Now, as an assistant crown attorney, I should... Now, would you please loosen up, huh? What am I asking? I'm asking you to come over here for a little while, go undercover, and, and by Monday we'll have the whole thing wrapped up. A weekend. Let me make myself perfectly clear, Mr. Ciccone. I'm not going up to Silver Lake Lodge or anywhere else with you for the weekend. Yeah, right. Look, when you get here, don't acknowledge me and don't acknowledge Marge, because I think the cokehead's on to us, all right? And give my Goodbye. best to us. Jack, that's good, right? Yes, that's two extra points. Okay, and then I move this here. No, Mr. Ciccone, you're moving the wrong way, like this. Always like this, only one way, see? Oh, right, I forgot, okay. Now, hold it, if that's there, that means I win again, right? Yes, I'm afraid it does. Good, I like this. This is a good game, I'm gonna do it again. Uh, beginner's luck has always bored me. Perhaps we could continue some other day. Okay, look, I don't believe in gambling anyway, so take your pennies back, okay? You mean that? Yeah. Yes, I can see you do. You, sir, are the right sort. You are too, Clemmy. Would you like to go fishing? No, no, I'm a vegetarian. I have a secret fishing hole. I discovered it years ago. Yeah, but if you tell me about it, then it's not secret anymore, right? You should feel privileged. Winifred was the first one I told. Winifred? My first wife. We came here for our honeymoon, for the fishing. Winnie was always a great sportswoman, you know. After she died, I married again. And again. And again. So, Candy is your, uh, fourth. And from the looks of things, we're engaged to be divorced. I haven't had much luck with wives since Winifred. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, that's perfectly all right. As with card games, I prefer to quit while I'm behind. Everybody knows Candy married me for my money. Well, not necessarily. Why else would a 20-year-old girl marry a 73-year-old man? Love? <coughs> well... Have a good time fishing, Clemmy. Yes, I hope I do better than Howie Allen. What? I told him about my secret fishing hole, but he never caught a thing, God rest his soul. Oh. Well, have a good time anyway, okay, Clemmy? Please, Louis, call me Clement. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought your wife called you Clemmy. Yes, she does, but all my friends call me Clement. Okay, take it easy, Clemmy. Clement, Clement. Got to remember Clement, okay. Yeah, take it easy. units left, Louie. Oh. Do you know how simple time sharing is? Yeah, um, yeah, Yvonne, I gotta share some time with my wife. I'll catch you later, okay? Come on, you wanna go skiing, hon? Skiing? skiing? They're waiting for you up there. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Let's go. Olympic time for that. She's a great skier. Let's Bye, go. Della. Uh, Marge, uh, can we... Uh, go, go, go. Can we we're, talk? No, we're broke.
guy slips and falls in the water. He can't get out because the ice keeps breaking. Bless you. And he's old. And pretty soon you got hypothermia setting in. Then you got... Another accident, right? You got death. An accidental death. Well, if you're ever in Palm Beach, look me up. I will. Do you want? No, thanks. Let's go back inside. I'm sure poor Clemmy wouldn't have wanted his death to ruin such a beautiful day. I wonder I'm going to get this uh, fishing gear back to the widow. Well, give it to me. I'll give it to Doug and he'll send it to her. Oh, and Lucha Coney, why don't you go home? I think you're a jinx on this place. Thanks. First Howie's sweater, now Clement's fishing gear. Getting into some pretty weird souvenirs. I'm gonna give it to Doug and the Centaur. Okay, I'll see you upstairs. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> I hate to bother you if you're busy. Good. This is uh, Clemens' tackle box. I thought I'd give it to you. He won't be needing it no more. Oh, gee, he's a lot of compassion. I'm really impressed. This package is for Howie Allen. That was Ollie Allen's. He won't be needing it anymore. Passion, I'm impressed. Look, before he died, he told me there was a package that was coming that uh, I should get if uh, he wasn't around. No deal. That's the mail. It's against my scruples to let you have somebody else's mail. Sit there, Danny. That's good. Shouldn't be walking around with these things, you know? I just understand what a guy like Howie's doing with a chemistry book. It's beyond me. Listen, I know what happened. Oh, are you okay? He's Get okay. crutch, Lou. Come on, He's get always hanging around here. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Oh, sit down. Geez. Sit, okay? All okay, right. here's your crutch. Take, Take it easy. Yourself. Come on. I mean, you know, it's not like something he didn't... Listen to me. First, Howie finds out that Rod is dealing cocaine, right? right? Yeah. Second... He buys a pound of cocaine. A kilo. Oh, I'm trying to make a point. Now, don't start with metrics. Okay, he buys a pound of oh, cocaine. Oh, that's okay. Tell me later. Look, you rent the skis for a week. That means you got to keep for a week. No refund. So Howie buys some coke from Rod, right? Right. Then he says, hey, the game's up. You cut me in or I blow the whistle. Rod laughs. Ha ha. If, uh, you sure that's how he laughs? Well, so Rod says, hey, you can't prove this is real stuff without turning over to the cops. Buzz off. Right? I like your rod imitation better than your Howie. So that is why Howie sent away for this chemistry book. He wants to read up on coke. What's chemistry got to do with it? Look here on the index, okay? Drug detection under law enforcement. It's an excellent theory, Marge, but I don't think it's it. Because it doesn't tell me who killed Clement. Clement? That was an accident. No, 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 I don't think so. Listen, when Redfern gets here, we're going to bust this whole thing wide open. Heather, she's not going to show up. It would interfere with her yachting schedule. People don't yacht in the winter, Look at all the money she's got. She's probably got an icebreaker. Face it, Louie. The woman's never going to show up. Louie, this is stupid. It is rather an unconventional place for a meeting. Trust me, this is a logical place for strangers to be. Well, Clement Bourne got definitely not of an accident either. We've been doing that hokey, hokey, Rod and Candy were up there doing the hanky, hanky. Hokey, hokey, hanky, hanky, what are you saying? It's just saying that Rod and Candy are past the hot tub state. No, 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 what I'm saying is that Candy probably got Rod to bump off Clement. Clement told me he was thinking of divorcing her. She wanted the money. Oh, I see. Don't you guys just get on with the plan? I mean, my feet are turning green from the chlorine. All right, look. The plan is, you've got to sign up for ski lessons with Rod. Yes, Mr. Ciccone, I was Ontario's downhill champion for two years in high school. Uh -huh. Try to be an F just once in your life, you can bust the case over All right, here. so I take a lesson. Where, where does that get me? That gets you very familiar with Rod, at which point you score some coke. Oh, I see. 
see. So he sells me the coke, and we have the evidence. He pushes, and we call the cops in. That's it. That's it? That's it. Great. Really great plan. It is a great plan, Marge. It's not a great plan. It's too simple. It'll never work. No, it's a good plan. Simple but good. This is it. You are... Your mind is always complicated here. It's a simple plan. <laughs> what? <gasps> what? Oh, the fish. What fish? That's not a piece of water. It's just a water. Put your back back there. It's good for you. We both slept on the floor last night. <laughs> I don't mean to bust anything up, folks. Oh, uh, hi, Mr. Duggana. You want to get in here? <laughs> You're about 40 years too late, ma'am. Uh, uh, we're just getting to know your new uh, guest here, Mrs. Uh... Uh, Redfern, Heather Redfern. Redfern, I'm hi. Mr. Uh... Mr. Ciccone. Hi, Pleased to meet you. Will you be requiring a separate room, too, or are you going to sleep in the hot tub? Separate room, please. <laughs> Pick that up so fast. You're a natural. You sure you haven't skied somewhere before? I watched a lot. You know, summer, it's fast places. <laughs> See that slope over there? With all that devil's teeth. You hang around with me, listen to everything I tell you. In a couple of days, we can risk our life up there. Sounds great. Uh, it's just one problem. That's what I'm here for, to solve your problems. I uh, sure could use some Coke. Coca-Cola. No, you know, Coke. Why ask me? I heard that you were connected. Listen, man, I don't even know what you're talking about. Even if I did, I don't know why I should trust you. Hey, do I appear dishonest? That's the trouble. I'll tell you what, I'm not making any promises, but why don't you meet me at the equipment shack around 4 o'clock and see what I can do. Great! I mean, sure. That's cool. I think that's today's lesson, don't you? One of the little trees fell down. Maybe I should have punched in more saxophones. No. You know, I tried to play this land as your land, but as soon as I started, I burst into tears. You know what arrived today? The biggest Yamaha you ever saw. How he bought your motorcycle? No, a Yamaha organ. Oh, yeah. I haven't had the heart to take it out of the crate. It must be expensive. How he must have a lot of money, huh? When he first came up here, I thought he was broke, and then, like, overnight, everything changed. Suddenly he had all the money in the world. He, he had bought a condo here, and he even bought an ounce of cocaine, but we were too afraid to try it. <laughs> yeah, well, good for you. Don't get the wrong idea about Howie. I, I mean, he wasn't just a good-time Charlie, you know. He, he had a social conscience, too. He did? Yeah, he, he was very concerned about pollution. Pollution? You mean, like, pollution in the water? Or... That's all he talked about after that day he went fishing. I guess the fish weren't too good. Pollution, like in the air and the, the yeah. water. Uh, right. Well, look, it's, it's been really nice uh, speaking with you, Della. Uh, there's something about you that that reminds me of Howie. Yeah, well, uh, we're both middle-aged, you know, and bald. May you rest in peace. It's more like the way you dress. Yeah, well, <laughs> thanks a lot. And uh, I'll, I'll see you. Take it easy. Well, I hope those knots aren't too tight, ladies. Well, I gotta go. Don't give me that. You like hurting people, you murderer. I don't think we should make him angry. What'd she call me? Ah, uh, she doesn't remember. Murderer. Look, lady, I'm no murderer. I'm not even a coke dealer. I'm a ski pro. 
This whole cocaine thing, that was sidelines, Candy's idea. Oh, oh, sure, great. Blame the woman. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to hurt you guys. I just need time to get away. Here, show you there's no hard feelings. Why don't you toke on this? It'll relax you till help comes. Would you get away from me with that stuff? That makes me sick. It's evil. I know you're a straight lady, but is anybody that straight? Do you think I could have a little of that? Heather. Well, I'm just a little uh, tense. I could use a buzz. Heather? Thanks. Could you like me? I don't believe this. Well, I really got to go now, ladies. I'll see you. Ciao. Hey, Marge. I told you I didn't want any of that stuff. Gee, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Marge, I don't want to smoke it. I just want to burn through the rope. Oh, I didn't know that's what you had in mind. Oh, gee, I'm sorry, Heather. Oh, Marge. That's cool. Cool? God almighty, what are they doing? They go downhill. This is ridiculous. There's a snowmobile when you need it. talking about gee i don't know i forgot well you know something i'm real glad we're friends oh me too good buddy me too <laughs> wait a minute i know i know i know what i want to know how come you and that uh that hockey player boyfriend of yours don't settle down because i won't let him wear his skates to bed <laughs> Hey, Marge. How come you and Louie don't settle down? Gee, I don't know. It's just that whenever we start to settle, he sinks. Oh, Marge. You know, that's really profound. Now, listen. What happened to that rope? Did you burn through that yet? The rope? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the rope! Yeah, Marge. See, Mark. I'll guess. Is that a moose breaking a twig? Close. How many times do I have to tell you, Yvonne, I don't want to buy a condo? Now put the gun down and quit it with the hard sell, will you? Better be careful around that hole, Louie. We wouldn't want to break the ice. Yeah, I'd hate to fall into pollution. Disgusting, isn't it? Waste seepage from an old paper company up the river. Kind of blows your winter playground, eh? Winter and summer, Louie. Who'd want to swim in a dead lake? I guess you better sell all your units before the ice melts and then uh, get out of here, huh? And speaking of dead, let you and I take a little trip up to the top of Devil's Teeth. Actually, I don't know how to ski. I'm just standing around these things looking at the water. On the second hand, I'm going to learn, okay? Which way you want me to go? Hey, I see Louie. Where? He's on the channel, on the way to... Devil's teeth. What's he doing up there? I can't ski. He doesn't ski. Far out. Listen to me. We gotta go rescue Louie before you break into a course of Rocky Mountain High. Far out. Daddy owned a lot of property in town, and we were very rich. And the depression came, and Daddy lost all the property that he owned. It was worth nothing. You're old enough to remember the depression, then. I spent 50 years trying to forget it. Daddy couldn't stand being worth nothing, so he blew his brains out. Mother's brain didn't work too well after that, so they locked her up in a loony bin. What happened to little Yvonne? <laughs> she became the best damn real estate agent in Ontario. 
Last year, I practically stole this place from Duggan. And I started my time-sharing idea. It's been very successful. I've only got four units left. I think you're a little confused with your math. You've got to resell Clements, and you've got to resell Howie's. <laughs> Howie Allen was never time-sharing material. He blackmailed me into giving him a unit. You found out about the pollution, right? So you did him in. And Clement found out, and you pushed him in the water. He was too damn rich to pay off. Well, Louie, I think it's time for you to go skiing. Come on, I, I don't know how to ski. These are uh, the wrong skis, too. You're supposed to have downhill. Come on, you don't mean that. I, I fall down if I go down this hill. You'll fall down right here if I shoot you, so what's it going to be? Shirts for it. I'm hoping and wishing that the next apparition is the sight of you welcoming me home. It's hard enough living without having visions to the left and the right of you. They won't leave me alone. Give me a cold, hard fact. I'm, I'm seeing, seeing things. things. 